All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I want to show you how to drive this beast of a flashcard model deck, the Japanese in a year model deck. Um, I'm not going to talk about why I'm learning the way I am or how to learn kanji or why I'm using these flashcards because I have plenty of other videos talking about that. So let's just look at how to use this model deck. If we open up the browse function in Anki, choose this deck, we're going to see some example cards in here. And these are just for the purpose of importing the templates into Anki. So you don't have to do anything with these, but you can take a look at them if you want. These are based on um, Gabe Weiner's Fluent Forever Japanese model deck. So it's largely the same, although I've added some extra fields, um, tweaked a few things that give it a little bit better functionality for me, and uh, a few more options as far as learning stuff in Japanese. So let's take a look at what this does. So let's add some flashcards. If we check out our flashcard types here, you'll see that this model deck will have imported uh, six types, three up here and three down here. The stuff in the middle is just default Anki stuff. So on the top we have Japanese versions of the flashcards and on the bottom identical but English versions of the flashcards. Meaning that even though you're learning Japanese, if you use the English ones, uh, which were the default Fluent Forever ones, it's going to ask you some questions in English, like what's the mnemonic for blank? What's the stroke order for blank? Uh, which is good when you're a beginner, but at this point I prefer to have those questions in Japanese so I can totally be immersed in Japanese. So these flashcards are identical to those in function, but um, most of these have a Japanese version. So there are some old uh, Fluent Forever flashcards that I'm no longer using. And I don't think I converted those to Japanese, so sorry. But the ones that I am using do have a Japanese version. So let's check those out, beginning with number one, mnemonics. This is fairly straightforward. You stick the radical or the character that you want to learn. Let's say that I want to learn this, this word for China, Chu Goku. And the first thing I would do in learning any word where there's kanji I don't know is make mnemonics for those characters. And so I would um, do a multi-search, which I'll have a link to this script below also. Um, actually, let's see, China is not a good image for this. Uh, how about a spinning top? Kind of looks like that. So I could use this image to remember this character. And normally this is all I have to do. So I click Add. And we will see that we added two flashcards like this. There's one that asks, Kono image wa dou yu desu Or what does this image mean? And on the back, we have uh, this other question that says, you know, what is the mnemonic for this character with the image on the back? And again, normally that's all that I do, but you can use these extra fields if you want. So you can add a stroke order here. Example words here, you could put, you know, China. So you have some context for something that uses this character. Um, and you can also make an extra test to ask yourselves, you know, what are some other characters that use this radical? And so if you put something in this field, it'll make that flashcard. Otherwise, leave it blank. So normally I just use the two fields here and sometimes the example uh, word. So let's make a word flashcard now. I'm going to select number two, Japanese sentence cards. And this is that monster we saw before. So I put the word here in the word field. This is China. Um, now I need a picture of China. Let's assume I want to make a very simple flashcard, just with a picture on one side and the word on the other. So I've got a picture of China, the word China. I do want to test myself on the word comprehension, so put something in this field. And I also want to test myself on the final kanji combo. And I'll show you what all these do. Uh, the last thing I want is a recording 
of this word, which I can grab from forvo.com very quickly, download, and drop it in this recording field. So this kana pronunciation was automatically generated by a plugin, an add-on that I'm using in Anki, which I discussed in another video. Um, so I'll put a link to that below also. And this pitch accent stuff is also from uh, an add-on, and that'll get automatically added. It doesn't seem to be doing anything right now, but we don't need it to uh, to carry on with this. So let's create these flashcards. I'm not going to worry about anything down here. You can see that it added some uh, stroke order diagrams automatically, but um, let's not worry about the second half of this model for now. Now if I go back into Anki, I browse and see what we created. We have three flashcards for China. So we have this, which is just a picture of China, and on the back it has the word, the pronunciation, audio, stroke order, diagrams, all that good stuff. And then we have a comprehension card where we just see the word and we're supposed to know how to say it and what it means. And then on the back side we get everything else. Then the last flashcard type that we have is this. It says kanji wa nan desu ka? What is the kanji for this word? And so you'll hear the recording. See a picture of China, and then you're just supposed to know, okay, it's this character and this one. And that is it for this word in the simplest of cases. Now, if you are learning kanji in the same way as Gabe, you would probably want to use a bunch of these extra fields down here. So these will create kanji story flashcards, kanji stroke order flashcards, by the way, I have now made the stroke order flashcards optional, so there's an extra field for that, um, and they are turned off by default. Um, I, I think they're a good thing to do, but I'm not a huge fan of them. They just annoy me and don't, um, don't provide enough benefit for me personally because I'm more concerned with just being able to read kanji, so if I just keep it to the minimal kind of kanji production stuff, that works okay for me. Anyway. That being said, these are turned off now, but you can activate them if you want using these different fields. Um, and by the way, if you drag, for example, something into stroke order um, diagram number two, that should automatically activate the card for stroke order diagram two. Same goes for number three and four. Otherwise, these will be turned off. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, you have all these extra options that you can use. These are still left over from the Fluent Forever model deck. Um, however, I have not been using them because I've been replacing the function of those cards with just more mnemonics. So if I have a complicated character, like I made an example, um, I made a video recently talking about uh, kanji, and one of the characters being this monster here, and let me uh, let me do this just so we can get a zoomed in. Yeah, okay. So if you have a really complicated character like this, you could use these Fluent Forever fields, but in my case, I've chosen to just make a bunch more mnemonics. So I would learn a mnemonic for this piece, one for this piece, one for that piece, and then start combining them. I want to learn these two together, these two together these two together, and then finally I want to make another mnemonic for all of this together, so one single image for the character. And that's been working well for me. So given that that is the case, um, I don't use anything below this test final kanji combo. So the entire bottom half of this I don't really use anymore. Um, except for occasionally these last two fields to create a mnemonic. But normally I actually go out to this separate card model for radicals, <clears throat> excuse me, for radicals, and I make uh, my mnemonics here. So that is basically it for this flashcard type. Um, 
Let me put China back in here. Um, the only other thing we haven't really talked about, uh, actually two things. So one is a sentence. So let's say I want to make a sentence. Chugoku ni kitai desu. I want to go to China. I want to go to China. So I would blank out the word that I'm trying to learn, which is China, and then put the full sentence in the back in this counter word, personal connection, full sentence, extra info field. This doesn't make any extra flashcards, it just adds the sentence there. So now they look like this. Blank, I want to go to. Or in this case, you have China on the front side, and then on the back you have the sentence. And this adds the sentence into all of these flashcards too. So, that is the flashcard model in a nutshell. The only one, the only feature we haven't discussed yet is this new kanji reading. And that's something that I added recently, um, which you could use in this case. It's better for a, an example like this. Okay, so this character, you know what, let's make a new flashcard. So, let me go back to this flashcard type. Um, if I want to learn the word for nama, which means raw, this character has a whole lot more um, possible pronunciations. So, for example, this shows up in kakusei, in a student, or sensei. It's often pronounced many different ways. If you want to learn a new pronunciation for a character you already know, you can do it in this way. So, for example, uh, forgive me because I just learned this word and I don't remember exactly how to use it, but let's say, uh, I don't know. Uh, no, uh, sakana, a raw fish. So either nama no or nama na, but we'll just use this as the example. So let's say we have this really short sentence, raw fish. I just want to show you what this flashcard does. I'm going to turn this option on. Give you a picture. Just so this is done right. And let's take a look at the flashcards. Um, okay, so new kanji reading. Okay. So the new flashcard looks like this, which says Hatsuong wa nan desu What is the pronunciation of this character in this context? And so that's all it is. And on the back, you would have your recording, your pronunciation written in kana, or anything you like here. But the idea is just to have a, a way to say, okay, here's this character in this context surrounded by all these other words. How do you pronounce it? So that's all that is. Um, we are essentially done. The only other thing I haven't talked about is this third flashcard type. And this functions in the exact same way as the others, but this is specifically designed for importing flashcards from a pre-made deck. So there's a bunch of ones out there on the internet. You can find spreadsheets full of sentences and words and all kinds of stuff. This is identical from here down. So the bottom half is the same. The top half is mostly the same, it's just we have extra fields for the extra fields that will show up in a spreadsheet, like this one. So this is one that has all of these words, all of these sentences, and we have a bunch of extra info here. So this is just a way to accommodate that. If I was importing from a spreadsheet like this, I have a space for the English trans, uh, translations, the part of speech, the English sentence translation. 
Um, this is good stuff to have in the flashcards. However, I've chosen to hide it from the flashcards themselves. So it's here in Anki, so you can access it. But um, if you want to still avoid translation, um, which is the way that I'm doing it, you can have all this stuff without it being on the flashcards. Otherwise, the rest is the same. There's an extra field here for sentence audio, because um, in this case, there's um, sentence audio as well as vocab audio. And the rest is the same. So if you want to import a bunch of flashcards from a deck like this, you simply have to line up. When you go to do the Anki import, you just have to choose the right fields um, to line up your spreadsheet with Anki. And so that might mean you have to rearrange the spreadsheet a little bit, but that's not that hard to do. So that is it for this flashcard model type. The only other thing is if you do want to import stuff from this um, spreadsheet or one like it, I recommend you check out a video that I made where I kind of talk about how I'm approaching importing all this stuff and making flashcards with it because I, I import it all but then I still do some customization. There is a video that I made called uh, something like I finished the 625 list, um, now what? And so if you search for that or look on the channel, you should be able to find it. And that talks about a little bit more about the import procedure. But anyway, as far as how this flashcard works, that is it. I hope this is useful. I hope you enjoy this flashcard model deck. And um, yeah, enjoy. All right, thanks, guys. See you later.